world is not, in fact, ruled by global corporations. It is ruled by the global financial system. To appreciate this fact, us Canadians must understand what money is and where it comes from. The official figures from the Bank of Canada show that Canada's money supply now totals about $780 billion. Of this amount, less than 5% is cash and coin. The vast majority of the money supply, about 95%, is electronic money that is registered in the computers of various private banks. This money comes into existence as debt when a citizen takes out a bank loan or a mortgage. Banks do not actually make loans out of their depositors' money, as some people might believe. That would actually be against the law. They create the money by tapping a computer key, or so to speak, creating money out of thin air. As the electronic money circulates from one bank to another, a complicated formula allows each bank to create more money based on the original electronic money loan. Canada's banks do not need to hold any cash asset reserves anymore. They used to have to have a 10% reserve. Then the Mulroney government did away with the reserves from 1991 to 1993. Today, they can issue credit just by tapping that key and have no reserves backing it up. Your collateral is their security. This is an astounding and profitable privilege for our private banks because they are allowed to charge interest on this money created essentially out of nothing. You want to hear something even more amazing? Canada has its own publicly owned central bank, the Bank of Canada. Our central bank is authorized by law to create money for the use of the federal government almost interest free. The bank can spend money into circulation and the government can borrow up to 33% of its projected annual revenue for public works and services. Provinces can do likewise to 25% of their projected revenue. For several decades the government created an average of 25% of the money supply. Since the tenure of Mr. Kretschian as finance minister in the mid-1970s through to PC finance minister Wilson to Martin, the involvement of the Bank of Canada in our country's fiscal policies has decreased to almost zero. The governments now borrow from private banks at commercial interest rates. That's incredible. We have our own bank that we can use to fund our own provinces and our own projects, yet we borrow and pay for the money that we borrow. Doesn't make any sense. The Auditor General's 1993 report states, In 1991-92, to 92, the interest on the debt was $42 billion. This cost of borrowing and its compounding effect have a significant impact on Canada's annual deficits from Confederation to 1991-92. to 92. The federal government accumulated a net debt of $423 billion. Of this, $37 billion represented the accumulated shortfall in meeting the cost of government programs since Confederation. The remainder, $386 billion, represents the amount that the government has borrowed to service the debt created by previous annual shortfalls. Today the debt figure is a whopping $550 billion and all due to compounding interest on borrowing from private banks which could be greatly reduced if we used the Bank of Canada. In the 1990s we averaged an annual debt servicing payment of $42 billion annually and that did not include repayment of the debt principal. In effect the debt principal is unrepayable unless we go back to financing through the Bank of Canada interest free. So at our current laws and the current way our money system is set up, we will never, ever get out of debt. This doesn't make sense to me at all. We have been paying $42 billion annually in interest payments to private banks on a real expenditure of only $37 billion. Let me repeat that. We have been paying $42 billion annually in interest payments to private banks on a real original expenditure of only $37 billion. 
This sum of 42 billion per year has been a windfall profit to our private banks. No kidding. And these banks, the same ones that can print money out of thin air, no wonder they have been such generous donors to the major political parties' election coffers. Liberal Prime Minister Mackenzie King said in a 1935 election speech, until money creation and control of credit is restored to the government as it most conspicuous and sacred responsibility, all talk of sovereignty of the nation and democracy is idle and futile. And that is why David Corten can say that it is really the global financial system which really rules the world. Money is no longer backed by gold or silver or anything tangible. It is backed by debt. More people need to understand what this means despite the difficulty most of us have grasping these concepts. The way the finance system is set up is indeed incredibly complex, but it is actually the sheer simplicity of the fundamental ripoff that usually eludes understanding. Let's keep trying to get at it and check up on those politicians who are asking for the vote. Do they understand the real money scam? And if not, why not? This is a critical mind seed. Thank you for watching. Your comments and your ratings will provide me with feedback so that I can better inform the people about the truth of what is really going on in our world today.